Well, hey, everybody, a very big welcome to you. My name is Pastor Craig, and I'm really excited that you decided to take a moment out of your busy schedules during the midweek services to come along and be part of church from wherever you are in the world. A very big welcome to you to Victory Life Church Online. We're right in the middle of a series entitled Faith, Hope, and and love. And if you've missed any of those series or messages in that series, you can click on the link or the banner provided right now, and that'll take you to a place where you can listen to the the messages from the previous sessions. For those of you joining us in the room, a very big welcome to you. Thank you so very much for being part of Victory Life Church Online from wherever you are right here in our Sherman location as we broadcast this message around the world. Before we jump in, let's share together, let's pray together, get your Bibles ready. We're going to be journeying through some scriptures around hope today, and I'm really excited as we jump into the message entitled, Run the Race. Let's pray together, and we'll jump straight in. Father, we thank you that we can come together from wherever we are in the world. You amaze us with your ability to bring us together in love, in unity, and in peace. And so, Father, we thank you that from all cultures, all lands, all nations, all tribes and tongues, we can come together and bow before you, bend the knee before you, as you teach us and you lead us. We love you, and we declare you our God, and there is no other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, if you are joining us and you've been following along with the series that we've been in, you know that the theme scripture that we've been looking at today, uh, or these, over the last couple of weeks, is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. It's out of the love chapter. You know the one that you always hear about at, at weddings and, and you, you always read about? It. It's the love chapter. And uh, that chapter ends with a, a, a verse that really has been at the middle of what we've been discussing. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now remember we said, just like a, a, a math sum... Three times two equals six. Six is the greatest of three and two. It's a, it's a bigger number, right? Because it is the product of three times two. It's the product of, of two other numbers which happen to be smaller. And when you multiply them, you get a greater thing. Well, in Scripture, faith multiplied by hope b- brings about a greater thing. It's called love. And that's why this Scripture calls love the greatest thing. That's why this Scripture says that love is the greatest. Because we need some faith to walk out in hope, to demonstrate the love of God. And so as we journey through this equation, as we journey through this, this sum, it, it's not really a sum because it's not adding, it's, a, it's more of a multiplication sum, but it's, it's, it's faith, hope, and love. And when we have a look at that sum, we, we have a, we've had a look at what, what it means to walk in faith. And we've, we've decided that faith is, is a moment of ignition. Um, faith says that, that I'm going to get up and do. I'm going to believe that I can get this. I believe that I can move in this direction. I can, I can believe I'm ignited to get something done. And, and we've taken a look over the last two weeks of what it means to step out, to stand up in faith. But we've also had a look over the last two weeks that God doesn't expect anything from you unless he's already given it to you. And we had a look at that scripture in 1 Thessalonians verse 1 and 3, 1 verse 3, where it says, Remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. You see, God gives us faith to get going, the work. God gives us that faith to get going. He, he says, I will give you a moment. I will give you, I will give you a, a moment of faith to know that where you are right now is okay, but it's not good enough. He wants you to realize that I want to get going. I want to do more. He gave Abraham that moment of faith when he, when he said, hey, get up, leave your father's tent, leave your, father, your family and go to a land to which I will show you. Abraham needed that faith moment, that moment of faith to step up and start moving. He didn't know where he was going. He just knew that he had to start moving. So God gives us faith to get us moving. He gets, gives us faith, Romans chapter 12, to get us moving. That scripture then says to us that he needs us to endure. He needs us to keep going. He doesn't just want us to get all excited one moment and be deflated the next. He wants us to keep moving. He wants us to keep going. He wants us to keep doing that excitement that he's placed in our hearts through faith. And so he gives us hope so that we can have endurance, according to that scripture in 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3. 
So over the next two weeks, we're going to be taking a look at how do we get up, faith, get moving, hope, so that we can tell the story of love. And that's what we're going to be finishing up with. We are going to be finishing up with the labor prompted by love, as that scripture in 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3 says. Now remember correctly, last week we had a look at that story of David, where he had that moment of discontent. We had that moment where he said, no more. I'm not going to let this giant taunt me or be part of my life anymore. I am going to take this moment of faith and I'm going to walk it out in hope. And he did that. And he, of course, we know the story. He slew the giant. And we had a look at what it means to have that moment of holy discontent. So if you're good with that, that's the summary of where we act in the series. That's the summary of where we are. And I want to jump right in today and have a look now at this next step, hope. Now, a lot of people in their Christian walk might think that hope and faith are very similar. Well, you know, I can have faith, but that doesn't necessarily mean I have hope. The two are intrinsically entwined but they are not the same thing. Faith and hope have been given to us, according to that scripture in Philippians, for two very distinct reasons. They've been given to us for two very different reasons. One starts and one keeps going. And when we get going, we realize that we can start. And when we start, we realize that we can keep going. So faith and hope work off each other to walk out the story of love that Jesus has given us. Let's just have a look very carefully at the scripture that really tells us a little bit more about faith. It's a famous scripture that tells us what the definition of faith is, and that's Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. So take out your Bibles, open up your version Bible if you've got it, or you can just click on the notes on the notes tab, and uh, you'll be able to follow along with these notes as we have a look at this um, definition of, of, of hope and faith. I'm going to read the first part of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 in the Message Bible, and then we're going to switch over to the New Living Translation. Now, if you're looking for Hebrews, it's in the New Testament. If you are following along in a, in a, in a physical Bible, it's in the second half of the New Testament of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 in the Message says this, The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith that we have in God, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Did you see there that were, there were two very distinct areas that faith prescribes or describes? The first is, is that faith is a firm foundation. In other words, it's the starting point. It's from which that you build. It's the starting point of our life worth living. Now, life worth living isn't a starting point. Life worth living is a journey. It's something that's going to continually happen. It's something that's going to keep going. So the faith is the foundation upon which the endurance that we need to live life is based. Is that making sense to you guys here in the room? I hope it's making sense to you at home. You see, faith is the start, the foundation, whereas hope is the, the living the enduring, the getting it done every day, getting up every morning, having that same sense of excitement for whatever it is that you're hoping for over and over again, day after day. Hope is the stirring up of that excitement. In fact, in Revelation, Jesus describes it as returning to your first love. Now, for those of us who've accepted our, our walk with Jesus Christ, we know that that moment when we accepted Jesus into our lives, there was a spark. There was something that was wow. And, and we kind of, we had this moment in our lives where you can remember, we've some, some of us have got it written in our Bibles on the front cover, the date that we, we accepted Jesus into our lives because that was the moment, that the faith moment where we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. But as we've walked that journey, maybe life has ground you down. Maybe church has kind of been a little bit strange where you are. That's why you're here online, because it's one of the best places to be in the world, right? Maybe, maybe church has ground you down, and maybe, maybe you've got a little bit tired, and that excitement, that zest has, has kind of waned. And, and that excitement's not there anymore. And Jesus says, well, what you've got to do is you've got to constantly be returning to your first love. Constantly be returning to the excitement of it. Constantly be going back to what it feels like, what it, what it was like, that moment of faith. That ability to constantly go back to that moment of faith 
is called endurance. It's called remembering what God has done in your life. It's called remembering what He's achieved in your life. And even though your circumstance is bearing you down and getting you down, you have got the ability to remember what it's like to be excited, full of zeal, full of passion, full of power every single day, no matter what's pulling you down. And that ability to return to that moment of faith is called hope. And the ability to keep that engine going is called endurance. And so we can understand why God gives us faith to get going and hope to keep going back to our moment of faith. Am I making sense? You see, that is how faith and work and hope work together. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for, says Hebrews 11 verse 1 in the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Faith gets the imagination going. It gets the picture in our mind. It gets, the, it gets the whole mind going about what it could be if we just had this, if we just had that. Then we could be like this and we could get this done. It paints a picture. And then what it does is it births a hope that keeps that picture a reality, a constant reality. So here's what it looks like. You know and you know in your soul that you, you want to have a good day. And you go to bed at night going, tomorrow is going to be a good day. And you give yourself a whole lot of reasons why tomorrow is going to be a good day. And you go to bed with that description, that motivator in your mind. You might even pick a scripture the evening before you go to bed to, to kind of stand on, to say, that's why I'm going to have a good day, because it says in scripture X, Y, or Z. And then you get up in the morning, and you've got a pounding headache, and it's icy cold outside, and the car won't start, and, and the kids are running late to get into the car to get to school, and you get to the school, and you get a, a scowl from the, from the headmistress because your kids are late for school, and as you drive out, you'd park your car at your office, and and you get out and you run upstairs and you get to work and you come down later for lunch and you've left the lights on and your, your battery's flat. And very quickly, what you stood on, the excitement that you had in setting the theme for having a good day is forgotten. You've lost hope in that which faith had given birth in your heart. Am I making sense? You see, when we, when we lose faith, in that picture, that imagination, we're not losing faith. Faith is done. Faith has been given to us. That imagination has been done. It's been planted in our minds. But when we lose that picture, we're actually losing hope. And when we lose hope that that picture can actually come to be, well, we, we lack endurance. You see, if I got up in the morning and despite my headache, said that that headache is going to go away because of what I had birthed last night in my mind as regards what kind of day I was going to have, I probably would find that that headache dissipates in my life because I know that I have the authority to tell that headache to go away because I have the authority to say to the world that we're having a good day today. And when I keep that scripture in mind, my headache comes right. The children are not as... Um, aggravating, irritating. They might do the same things, but the situation doesn't wear me down as much because I'm standing on the word of faith that I had the night before. My vehicle running out of battery power, well, it'll happen because time and unforeseen circumstances befall us all and we sometimes do something stupid that results in consequences, but we don't allow that circumstance to pull us down, weigh us down, and rob us of the picture that was planted in our mind by the word. Am I making sense? And so as we begin to walk out the picture, we walk out in hope. And as we begin walking out the picture that faith gives us, we begin to develop endurance. And I hope that illustration helps, helps us understand this Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. If it didn't, here's what you've got to know. Faith kicks things off, work. Hope walks it out, endurance. Faith kicks things off, but hope walks it out. Here's how Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 puts it. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses 
to the life of faith, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. The headache, the irritating children, the car battery that's flat, the, the irritating headmistress. Let us strip off anything that takes us away from that life of faith so that, what? That we can run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Faith gets things going. Hope keeps us moving. Faith has a work to perform today, and hope stands on the sidelines and claps and cheers to the picture that faith plants in your imagination. Faith has a role to play. I'm not undermining faith. No, in fact, faith without works is dead. We know that God has given us faith so that we can get going. Faith without you getting going is dead. But faith without continuation, without endurance, accomplishes nothing. It just dies. And we're going to get to that next week as we discuss what it means for hope to be deferred. Faith comes by hearing and rearing the Word of God, according to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So we know that we can receive that Word, that we're going to have a good day, and we can walk it out in hope. We can walk it out in endurance. We need to be in the Word of God to receive our faith triggers. We need to be in the Word of God to be hearing and getting our faith triggers built up. But hope doesn't come from moments. Faith is built from a moment. Faith is built from hearing something on the television and going, yes, I can do that. That's a moment of faith. Hope is built through experience. Hope is built through working it out. Hope is built through looking at a situation and saying, that is not what the Word of God says. And instead of changing the Word of God, your faith moment in your life, you change your circumstance to fit the faith. Can I say that again? Hope allows you to look at your circumstance and change your circumstance to fit the faith word rather than changing the word and unbelieving the word over your circumstance. And the more we can do that, the more we can exercise the ability of standing on the word, standing on the faith, despite the circumstance, the stronger our hope becomes. The stronger our hope becomes, the stronger we are able to endure all things. And so we need to be able to be looking at that word of God as a faith moment, but by experiencing the hope. Have a look at what Romans chapter 5 and verse 4 says will happen to you. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Now if salvation is our faith, and our hope in salvation creates endurance, and endurance creates good character, and we're becoming like the character of Christ as we become good, we can see how our salvation kicks hope into play, endurance builds character, and that character of you becomes more and more like the character of Christ. And the more we have the character of Christ, the more we can have faith in His Word, the more we have faith in His Word, the more we have hope, the more we have hope, we have endurance, the more our character becomes like Jesus Christ. And so this circle continues to happen. Faith is the thing in you that accepts the gift of promise, but hope confidently expects and works towards its fulfillment of that promise. Faith is the, is the thing in you that stands up and says, yes, I receive that promise, but hope is the one that confidently and continually expects and works towards the fulfillment of that promise. You see, we often say that God is a faithful God. But his faithfulness only came to evidence because of his faith. Now, if you think that faith and faithfulness are two different things, have a look at this example to see how faith turns into faithfulness through hope. So God sends his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Why? Because he loved us. Why? Because he loves you. And so he doesn't quite know what your response to Jesus is going to be because he doesn't force his will on you. He's a gentleman. And so what happens is, is he sends Jesus off into the world and hopes that through the generations, people 
will come to Jesus and come to understand the life that they can have in Jesus. In fact, we are one of those generations where God has faithfully sowed Jesus into and is now waiting, hoping, enduring until we come to a decision around what Jesus wants to do or has to do in our lives. And because he's constantly providing reminders, he's constantly speaking into, he's constantly showing us the way to Jesus Christ, because he wants to see his faith act come to fulfillment in your life, he's constantly enduring your rejection, he's constantly enduring my stupidity, he's constantly enduring things all the time, hoping, hoping, hoping that what he sowed in will become a reality in your life. He becomes a faithful God. He becomes a God that we know will always be there. You see, he didn't just have a moment where he said, I'm going to send Jesus and see what happens and then move on to the next thing and go, oh, well, but Jesus didn't work. I need to send something else. No, he sowed in in faith. He walks it out in hope and endurance, and because of faith being mixed with that hope, he now becomes known as being faithful, and so can you. You see, we have a, a world today that is all over the place. There's no focus, there's no loyalty, there's no commitment to following through. If I don't get gratification now, I move on to the next thing that promises to give me gratification now. That's not faithful. We see that in marriages. If I'm not happy here, I go here, and there's a problem of faithfulness in the marriage. And so when we have a look at the world today, they're not into the hope and endurance and faithfulness part of the journey. They're just into the moment the imagination, the wow factor, the quick fix, the wowness of the newness of something. And as a result, we, we don't see much follow through in the world. But God is an example where he takes his faithful moment, his wow love of man, sows Jesus in and is willing to endure for all time to make sure that hope is sown into people's lives, that love is given to them for all time. And so as he sows his faith and mixes it with hope, faithfulness is a character trait that we now know of God. So when that scripture in Romans chapter 5 and verse 4 says, this faith sowed in with hope will produce good character, well, if it's going to produce a quality called faithfulness in your character, it's certainly improved your character, hasn't it? So you see that faith can be turned into faithfulness through endurance and hope. The incredible thing about this is there's some things in Scripture that we don't have to have a whole lot of hope about. We don't have to have a whole lot of faith about. You know, I don't have to really, really dig deep to know that what God says is true. I don't really have to dig deep to, to know that, that God has set a process in place to make the sun come up every morning. And, and the waves to ripple through the oceans, through, through currents and tides. I don't have to dig deep for some of those things. You see, when it comes to some of the things that God has described about me, those things I wrestle with. I'm more than a conqueror. Well, I don't feel like one. It's not as assured in my heart as the sun coming up. It's not as assured in my heart. So I, I've had that moment of explanation that I'm more than a conqueror, but I'm not battling with faith. No, I've received that word in faith. I'm battling with hope and endurance. And sometimes when we, when, we, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, oh, I really need to have more faith. No, you need to have more hope in your faith. You need to have more endurance in what God has placed in you. I don't need to question God's promises in my life. I need to have more hope and endurance to see those promises come to fruition, even though it might be painful. Jesus had to go through some pain to fulfill some promises and some prophetic word expressed in Isaiah. But he was willing to walk out the pain to see the prophetic, the faithful word of God come to fruition in his life. He had to endure the cross to make sure that the word of God expressed in faith would come to be a reality. It's the assured expectation of the things hoped for, though not yet beheld. Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. And being born again means that our spirit man has already had faith and hope perfectly mixed in our spirit man. I do not have to hope to be something 
that God has already declared me to be. I don't have to walk around going, I wish I was a conqueror. I wish I was a conqueror. No, I can have the faith, receive the conqueror message in my life, and I can walk out confidently that I am a more than a conqueror. I don't have to have hope to be something that I know I already am. So I want to challenge you. If you don't have the hope in knowing what you already are, do you know who you are? Because if you know who you are, you'll know what to do. You see, if we lose track of the promises, the faith words of God about who we are, we very quickly lose track of the hope that we can have in those promises. We need to keep the faithful words of God that He's spoken over our lives top priority so that we can know who we are, so that we can know what to do. And what we do is we walk out the words of faith that God has placed in our hearts. You see, we, our job is not to try and get our spirit man right. God's done that. Our job is to try and get that which He's already done in the spirit man out in the flesh man. We have the work of walking in faith, mixing it with hope, and making sure that our flesh circumstances begin to match our spirit man circumstances. Stick around next week for that as we unpack that which is in our spirit versus that which is in our flesh. Very quickly, in summary, there are fundamentally three spaces of hope that you might be in right now. You might be in a place of no hope, where you are completely feeling abandoned and hopeless. You might very well have certain situations in your life where you have no hope. You're not hopeless completely right through your life. You're not about to commit suicide or wanting to end your life. Well, maybe you are. But there might be just certain pockets of your life that you've lost hope in. Well, remember we said that if you feel like you've lost hope in any specific area of your life or all of your life, well, then you've lost touch with the promises in faith that God has spoken over you. So if you're sitting in a circumstance right now where you're feeling like you have no hope, know that you can live in hope again. You see, in the scripture of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 to 12, I'm only going to look at the last line of verse 12. It describes what a life of without hope means. You see, it says, if, you have with, if you're living without hope, you're living without God. You see, intrinsically, if God is present, there is faith. Where faith is present, it gives birth to hope. Where God is present, where God is there, there too will be hope. And so in areas of your life where you're feeling kind of hopeless, it's because you've lost track of the Word of God over that area of your life in faith. And where there is no Word of God, there is no hope. So put the Word of God back into that situation and watch the hope be restored. Put the faith back into the Word of God into that situation, into your healing, into your family, into your finances, into whatever area of life you're feeling hopeless. In faith, put the promise of God back into that situation and watch the hope return. Scripture tells us that we cannot expect God to be there and hope to be gone as well. It's, the two cannot be in the same place. Okay, they have to coexist. They have to be there together. The two will never ever be in the same place and hope and faith not abound. And so when we look at it in that scripture, we need to understand that where there's no hope, there's no God. But God also knows that hope is an essential part of our heart. He understands that life will take your hope away. Life will allow you to lose track of where your faith is in. And if you put your faith in the wrong place, that leads to the second type of hope, and that's false hope. When you put your faith in the wrong kind of word, not God's word, maybe it's your word, maybe it's the doctor's word, maybe it's your father's word. If you put your faith in the wrong kind of place, you're going to have the wrong kind of hope. It's false hope. You see, God needed to give us back true hope. Because we lost that hope when we sinned. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, he speaks about the first prophetic word about Jesus coming. And he knew that life, Adam and Eve's life, had robbed them of hope because they had lost track of the word of God in their lives. 
And so he knew that he had to restore the word to restore the hope. And so he restored the word, which was Jesus Christ, and he made a promise for that word to be there. And so as we have a look, God knows that hope is one of our biggest needs. But he knows that hope, based on his word, is true hope and not false hope. Billy Graham, who we celebrate today as a man that stood up all of his life and, and stood up for what God believed in and lived a life according to the faithful word of God, he was faithful in his life. And we honor him today above all other days because today we celebrate his life and him passing and being with the Lord, big celebration in heaven. But he said this about hope. Perhaps the greatest psychological, spiritual, and medic medical need that all people have is the need for hope. Faith is a moment of belief. It's a moment, but hope is the journey that results. Don't get caught in a space of no hope, because that's going to cause your heart to get sick. Don't get caught in a space of believing another kind of word in your life because that's going to get you caught up in having false hope. No, rather understand that we are people that puts our trust in the true hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we can read that scripture all day, that whole section of Titus chapter 2 and Titus chapter 3. But in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18, it says this, God has given us his promise and his oath. And that promise and his oath causes us to have a good life, to walk out a hope and confident life. And finally, in verse 19, as we walk out this hope and confident life, it says that it leads us back to the inner sanctuary of God, Jesus Christ. And so we put faith in Jesus, that in his word, that builds hope in our lives. It enables us to carry on walking it out, keep the wheel turning. And as we walk out in hope, we have endurance. And as we hope, walk out in that endurance, we can build our faith in Jesus that gives us hope for another day, that gives us faith in his word, that gives us hope for another day, that gives us faith in his word. And slowly, as we allow our faith to grow into hope, we will not only have the work, the moment, the ignition, we will also have the courage and the power to endure every single day walking with God. Faith that leads us to hope and hope that leads us to faith. 1 Peter 3 and verse 15 says this, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you for a reason, for the hope that is within you. I want to say to you today that if you have received Jesus Christ into your life, you have received the word of God in faith into your life. If you've received the word of God, Jesus Christ, in faith into your life, the only thing that that can be birthed into, the only thing that that can become is hope. And the only thing hope can become is endurance. You see, the hope that is within you is going to give you the endurance to look back to Jesus in your circumstance and not at the circumstance. The hope that's been birthed on the inside of you will give you the promise that you require to walk out through the difficult times, through the challenges, through the circumstances. You see, God has never asked you to, to go through tough situations. He's never asked you to endure the hurt and the pain of losing a loved one a loss in death. He's never asked you to endure those things without giving you what you need to get through it. He's given you the word so that you can have faith in that word, so that you can have hope, so that you can endure. And when you mix your faith and your hope together, the greatest of these is about to come into your life, and that is love. True hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. And if you're walking a life right now where you've put your trust in something only to find that it's, it's like hot air, you've put your faith in something, maybe you've even made a, a physical, a, a monetary investment in something that didn't come to pass, and you had all hope of the return being greater than the investment, 
And you had all this hope built in up in you, but because of, of life, because of circumstance, that hope was pulled away from you. No matter where you are at the moment, if you're not able to walk through life with Jesus Christ, I can tell you now that you're either going to have false hope or no hope at all in your life. Understand that the only way, the only way you can take life back to the bank with joy, with peace, with conviction, with power, is to walk out in faith in the Word of God and watch that Word of God become hope and watch that hope drive you forward and push you on to the true hope in Jesus Christ. If you've never received Jesus and you've never ever really put your trust in what He had to say, because that's all this message is about. It's about believing what Jesus had to say. It's about believing His words. It's about really believing that when He says, love your enemy, that it's going to be good if you love your enemy. When he says, give and you'll receive, that you will receive from God if you give. When he says, trust in me, that you can trust in him, it's about believing and having faith in those words. Watch that faith restore your hope. You might be in a situation right now with or without Jesus Christ in your life where quite frankly, you are tired of being lied to. You are tired of having a false hope Maybe it's that relationship where every single time it goes wrong, there's a promise of it getting better, and it never, ever gets better. Maybe it's your finances where you, where you think you're going to be able to get out of the hole that you dug yourself into, and it never, ever seems to get any more shallow. It just gets, seems to get deeper and deeper and deeper into trouble. You're tired of the lies that this world has been giving you. Well, the truth the truth that will set you free, the truth that will help you understand, the truth that will get you out of that situation, the truth that will improve that bad marriage, the truth that will make you the better parent that you need to be, the truth that will restore that son or that daughter to you, that truth that will make your workplace the kind of workplace you want to be in. The truth is God's word, and all he's asking you is receive in faith that word and watch the hope be restored to your life. And so, if you've never received that word, if, you've, if you know what Jesus says, but you've never really accepted it and said, I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to walk out that word, those words that he's spoken. I'm going to go to the Bible today, and I'm going to read the words that Jesus has spoken and see how that gives birth to hope in my life. If you've never done that, today is an opportunity for you to simply click on that banner below, click on the link in the, in, the, in the room. We'd love to send you resources where you can get that word, where you can receive those words of Jesus into your heart, into your mind, and watch hope restored to your life or that situation. You see, Jesus is ready and waiting. All he's asking you for right now is for you to respond in faith. He's given you the faith that you need, He's given you the hope that you need. Will you get to work and will you endure the work to see hope restored to your life? Right now, if that's you, if you want to receive Jesus and you want to receive more of his words and you want to understand what he said about your life, please go ahead right now and click on the banner below. And as you click, there'll be a little form that pops up. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to send you those resources to help you along the way. If, however, you click on that banner and you've already received Jesus, but you've got a very specific circumstance that you'd like help with in restoring hope to, please click on the banner, fill out the form, and let us know just a, an area. Maybe it's marriage. Maybe it's parenting. Maybe, maybe it's finances. Whatever the area is that you need hope restored to your life, please let us know, and we'll send you resources of Jesus' words for that situation so that you can restore your faith and restore your hope. And one of the things that we do to celebrate the fact that, that Jesus' words are alive and well on the inside of us is we take a small piece of bread which represents, it is not, but it represents Jesus' body. And we say that His words are as genuine as His body was. He was real. He had a, a physical form and He walked amongst us to share the word, to give us faith, that gives birth to hope so that we can have endurance. He, he gave us these things as a symbol to say, yes, I receive you, Jesus, into my life, your body and your blood completely, your whole form into my life so that I can walk in faith. 
And when you walk in faith, hope follows. And so as you receive this body and this blood right now, no matter what you're doing, maybe you've got a a small cracker and a piece of water or a drink of water or or even maybe a stick of gum and some coffee, it doesn't matter. This is Jesus' body. It was broken so that you could have faith and hope and endurance and love and joy and peace in your life. But you do not have to listen to the word of the world that you can listen to the word of God. Take and eat and know that Jesus loves you. This is his body broken for you. He was serious about what he said. He was serious about the fact that this 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 promise he had made was so genuine, so real that he would die for it. And so this is his blood that was shed so that you can know that his promise was true. And so as we share together today's word in our lives, we share not just a a, a talk, we share not just a Bible verse, we share the intrinsic, real, genuine word of God wound into us, into our spirit man, so that we can have faith in what God has said through Jesus Christ so that we can walk out in endurance and we can have a life of hope. Let's pray together and then we'll dismiss and we'll get together again next week to continue this concept of faith giving birth to hope and when we multiply them, we get the genuine expression of God's love in our lives. Let's pray together and then you can be on your way. Father, we thank you so very much that we can come together from wherever we are in the world Speak this word deep into our hearts that we can see it manifest. Father, we take the gift of faith that you've given to us and we apply it to the word that you have given to us. And as we apply in faith the word of God in our lives, your word in our lives, Father, we know and we speak it right now that hope is birthed within us, that hopelessness and false hope and lies and deceit are cast from us and that you birth through the word and through the faith that you've given us, mixed together to form hope so that we can have endurance. Thank you, Father, for this word. Speak it to our hearts. Speak it to our minds. Let it be seen being walked out today and for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's people around the world said, Amen and Amen. Look forward to seeing you again this weekend as we continue the series, Mind Renewal by Pastor Dwayne. And then next week, we'll continue again, midweek series on faith, hope, and love. Thank you so much for being with us today.